Good morning and welcome to Faith Center's YouTube channel. I don't know where you're at or what you're doing, but we're just so thankful that you joined us this morning. I pray that the message is just for you today, so let's jump right in. Amen. Everybody good? I'm so glad to be doing church with you today. Turn to the person next to you and say, you look awesome today. Woo, some of you have been waiting all week for that. Amen. Come on, if you're, if you're next to your spouse and you're married to him, say, I just want you to know, baby, you're hot today. Woo! Amen. Yo! You like that? Baby, you're hot today. Yeah. She says, stop it right now. Listen, I love the new year, and I want to talk to you literally uh, about preparing for what I believe is going to unfold not only in our life as a church, but also you individually. And, and there are certain things that whenever you begin to, to follow uh, the, the year that we are in as, as uh, believers, but also following a, a, uh, the specific calendar year, the Jewish calendar, always have tremendous definition, and everything has specific purpose. And so from the time of creation all the way through to where we are at today, every Hebrew year has had a very specific meaning to it. And over the next or over the upcoming weeks, I'm going to begin to unfold some of those things because it's important for us to realize what's taking place within God's perspective uh, in the earth. And we, we need to apply that in our life. And at the beginning of every year, I just spend time not only looking at where we're at, but also asking God for some very specific things. And just in my prayer time, I'm very excited about 2019, uh, but I believe it's a year of where we're going to see dreams that have been on the back burner uh, begin to unfold. I believe there's things that God places in our heart for a specific time and a specific purpose. And I don't know what you may be dreaming about, but I just want to tell you in the upcoming weeks, uh, it's going to take us five weeks to get there, but I just want to give a commercial to you real quick, not for the sake of commercial points, but just to let you understand where we're headed to in the upcoming weeks. Because we're going to talk about how to put your dream to the test. We're going to talk about the enemy of every dream. And we're going to talk about how we come to the place of fulfillment. Now, fulfillment for me may, may look different than fulfillment to you. But I know there's things that's been scripted in your heart. I know there's things in you as a parent that you're dreaming about for your children. I know there's things that are, that are in you that you're dreaming about just for uh, your future. And then I believe there are those God dreams. Those God dreams that make an impact in the earth. The, the dreams that literally we're carrying that we may just have a small part to play, but yet it has a huge impact for the kingdom of heaven. How many of you know this world is not our home, right? This world is not our home. We're not just living for right now. We are living for the impact that the kingdom of heaven has in the earth. You have a part to play. I have a part to play. And as we get into the upcoming weeks, we're going to again begin to unfold the test of the God dream that I know that's within you. Listen, you may not be a Joshua that, that, that literally begins to lead a nation into deliverance. You may not be a Noah who has this incredible dream to build an ark and God begins to supply supernaturally for that. But can I tell you something? You may be a Joshua in the sense of leading your family to the next place where they need to go. You may be a Noah that needs to build something for the kingdom of heaven. And so I just want to stretch you in the upcoming weeks about what are you dreaming about? What are you spending time thinking about? Because God has put some very specific things in you. How many of you know the Bible says that literally he has thoughts, thoughts of a hope and of a future? Whenever Joel prophesied in the book of Joel, he said, In the last days I will pour my spirit out on all flesh, and my young men shall see visions, and my old men shall dream, say it with me, dreams. God is huge in putting within us a scope of dream and a scope of thought that's not just for us, but it's going to have impact in the kingdom of heaven. Now, if you're here and you're, and, and you're, you're a part of what we do, you're, help build, you're helping build a dream. 
The dream faith center is not something that, that, that I have of myself. It's something that God has released, and we're all carrying it. We're all stewarding it, and we're all seeing God have a major impact. Can you say amen? And it's just, I want to give you an example. Is I got, a, I got a, uh, an email from uh, Vietnam this, this, this past week and thanking us for the things that we did. We helped supply the orphanage there with coats. And, and uh, for those of you who are unaware that there's an orphanage that we support in, in Hanoi, Vietnam. And these children are amazing. And you know, I got a, 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 an email. And in this email, uh, she stated that we want to thank you for helping us carry the dream to rescue children. And I sat there and I thought about that, that I thought, you know, we don't do a whole lot. It's pretty substantial what we do. But the thing is, is that every quarter or every year, the special things that we do for that orphanage, we're helping carry a dream that's impacting the kingdom of heaven because every child that comes through that orphanage hears the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are clothed, they are rescued, and they develop a relationship with Jesus Christ in a nation where the church is still underground. Come on now, is that not significant for the kingdom of heaven? And that's what we do. That's what we do. And we help carry that dream, all of us in this place. And so over the, the next few weeks, I just believe that in 2019, God is beginning to do some very specific things concerning dreams that he's placed within you. And so you don't want to miss one service. Can you say amen? All right. Turn your Bibles to Matthew 26, if you would, please. And, and we're, we're building a foundation in this series called Could Could You Not Tarry? And I just want to, before I read this in Matthew 26, I want to refer to, uh, to 1 Timothy. You don't, you're not going to go there. Just hold tight in Matthew 26. But I want to refer to a, a specific foundation. And this is so powerful what the Apostle Paul tells Timothy. Timothy's a young man in, in ministry, and, and he is carrying a huge weight in, in propagating the gospel in a region uh, that, that, that is just now beginning to get, get it. He's, he's in the region where Gentiles are becoming saved. And this is an encouragement the Apostle Paul brings to him. And this is what he says to him. He says, hold fast, watch this, to the pattern of the words which I have spoke to you earlier. He says, Timothy, there's, there's a pattern that is here. And I want you to hold fast. Say that with me, hold fast. To the pattern of the things at which I have spoken to you. Another version uh, of 1 Timothy uh, begins to release a, a, a scripture or reads it this way. Let me say it this way. And it says that the things that you learn from the beginning. The things that you learn from the beginning. Can I tell you something? There are foundational things to our faith. There are foundational things to how we walk this thing out every day that we can never leave. It's the foundations that hold us. It's the foundations that secure us. It's the disciplines of our faith that keep us in the game. It's the disciplines of our faith that keep us from going to the place of just being lukewarm in our faith, right? How many of you know lukewarm is not a good place to be, right? Right? I mean, we, we, the Bible says that the lukewarm, Jesus referring to him, I would rather spew you out my mouth than for you to be lukewarm, all right? That literally... You and I have a discipline to our faith, and the thing that we're going to talk about today is one of those disciplines, and it's called prayer. Now, what I want to do in the next few moments, though, is I want to change your perspective of how you look at prayer. How many of you would be honest that if you were to be out in an open place and somebody asked you to pray, it would make you a little bit nervous, right? Right? You know, pe people, people do that all, all the time. Just, just because I'm a pastor, uh, they'll, they'll say, hey, can you come and pray? And so, you know, I'll, I'll come and I'll pray. It's just, it's just natural for me to do because that's what I do. But I shouldn't do that because of my title. I should do that because I'm a son of God. Come on now, is anybody here? I should do that because it's a discipline to my faith, not the position that I hold. How many of you know God's really not interested in positions? He's more interested about us being sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen? Listen, you know, don't call me pastor, just call me son, all right? I'm just a son of God. That's, that's who I am. That, that's who you are. But I want to change maybe a perspective of, of prayer because I want to build within us as a church the next few weeks 
a desire to really hold fast to the discipline of prayer, not for what we can gain from God, but what we can release unto God in worship, in prayer, in releasing faith unto Him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. When I come to the arena of prayer, I come to, I come to be with Him. I don't come just to bring my needs to Him. I come to be with Him. If he's the author and the finisher of my faith, I should want to spend time with him. Come on now, is anybody here? If God is the one that scripts uh, in his sovereignty every detail of my life, I need to be with the one that holds the details. Let me ask you a question. How many of you in this place today have everything figured out? Okay, we're all in the same boat, right? We don't have it all figured out. We don't, we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. We, we don't know the challenges that we're going to face in life. And if we are equipped enough to handle the challenges that we face, we, we're all in the same boat. So if we're all there, I want to spend the time with the one that has the answer. Come on now. Prayer is not just something that we do. Prayer is something that we are. We're people of prayer. Every year... At the beginning of the year at Faith Center, we ask you to take 21 days. And beginning next Sunday night, we're just asking you to take 21 days to pray more and to fast. Fast media. Fast certain levels of, of food. If you want to join with, with, with us, one of the things that we do is that we, we give up meat for 21 days. We give up anything that, that, that we like. Pop drinks, any, anything like that, we give that up for 21 days to fast and pray in preparation for the upcoming year. And before you leave today, if you want more details on that, I have a booklet for you. It's back on that back table right by the connect room. Before you leave, I got a full booklet for you that will outline all 21 days for you. And it will give you a prayer to pray each one of those 21 days. And in the back of it, if you want to do what I'm going to unfold for you in Scripture here in just a few moments, the Daniel fast, it gives you the details of that Daniel fast. And so you don't have to, do, you don't have to give up everything. I'm just asking you to give up something for 21 days to enhance your ability to spend time with God in prayer. Now look at this in Matthew chapter 26. This is verse 36. Then Jesus came to them, came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. And he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here. Here, please say that with me. Stay here and watch with me. Everybody say watch. He then went, he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to his disciples and he found them sleeping. I know you and I wouldn't fall in this category at all. We wouldn't, would we? I mean, Jesus is over there, full of burden, full of prayer. As the Son of Man, he is about to carry the sin and the weight of the world all the way to the cross sacrificially. He is going to be beaten beyond recognition. He is going to carry upon him every infirmity and every disease. He's carried it all. And it is with great sorrow that he is going to God in prayer. And he asked his disciples, those that were closest to him, he said, I want you to watch and I want you to pray with me. And when he comes back, they're sleeping. They're sleeping. Now notice what Jesus tells them. He, he, he says, could you not watch with me for one hour? The King James Version says, could you not tarry for one hour? Could you not watch with me for one hour? And then he says this, watch this, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, 
but the flesh is weak. Now, I want to pause there just for a moment because I want you to get a picture of what takes place within your life as you begin to be a person of prayer and not just somebody that prays. There's a difference. There's a difference between a person of prayer than a person that just prays. A person that just prays will get sleepy. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm glad you're not sleepy, my friend. <laughs> but a person, a person of prayer is one that where they begin to realize that on the inside of them, as a temple of the Holy Spirit, that you are as a born-again believer, the Spirit of God is willing. The Spirit of God within you. The Spirit of God within you as a born-again believer is willing to pray. I mean, literally, if you could get a picture of this, is that literally, if you could see on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit would be going like, come on, man, just pray. Let's do this now. Come on, pray. And the flesh, all right, the flesh, this which we have of our, our soul, our mind, our will and emotions, we're going, no, nah, it takes too much energy, I'm tired. I just don't have enough time to pray. I'd pray more if I had more time. Come on now, has anybody ever said that? I'd spend more time in devotion if I had more time. But the spirit on the inside of you is going, come on, man, pray. Let's go, I'm willing. You say, oh, no, the spirit on the inside of me is not like that. He's much more calm, much more reserved. He would still be saying, please pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so Jesus says, listen, I want you to understand that when you watch and pray, you are going to avoid the temptation that is on its way. Now put this in context if you would. The temptation that was on its way was for these disciples to totally turn from God because of what was going to take place with Jesus. The temptation was going to be to turn away from God. Just totally abandoned their entire relationship, everything that they had watched, everything that they had seen. They was going to run away from it. That was going to be the temptation. And Jesus says, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. So here's the newsflash for every one of us. We deal with temptation. We deal with temptation. But what keeps us from responding to the temptation that comes at us to leave our relationship with God and begin to pursue the appetite of the flesh, is prayer is the key discipline that we need to hold fast to that keeps us from going down that road. Come on now, is anybody? It's simple. It's simple, but we make it difficult. We make it difficult. He says, so could you not tarry for one hour? And then he says in verse 42, a second time he went away and prayed and said, oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and he found them asleep again. Can't find any good help around here. Come on, is anybody here? I can't find anybody good help. Everybody's sleeping. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm glad you're not sleeping. Come on, how many of you in your home feel like sometimes you're asleep? Sometimes in your own walk with God, it feels like sometimes you're just asleep. I want to challenge you that if you will begin to hold fast to be a person of prayer, you're going to find a new shout in your prayer life. You're going to find a new roar to your faith. You're going to find yourself responding where the spirit is willing even though the flesh is weak. I believe that God is asking us to wake up out of our sleep. I believe that God is asking us as a church that will you not tarry for an hour? Will you not tarry for an hour? Will, can you not just give up an hour of your day? What, what, what is an hour, right? What, what, really, what is an hour? Do you realize that the average person in America spends an hour a day scrolling through social media? The average person in America will spend an hour of their day just scrolling through social media. By the time that over a lifetime, you've wasted seven years of your life scrolling through social media. The average person in America will watch four hours of television or some form of media. The average person will spend four hours a day watching some form 
of media. How about an hour where the Spirit is willing? How about an hour in the midst of prayer and seeking after the plan and the will of God? Come on now, is anybody here? How about an hour of prayer that's preparing you and preparing your family for the challenge that is yet ahead? Because it's not a matter of when or if the challenge is going to come. It's when the challenge is going to come. It's going to happen, and it will come. And Jesus comes to his disciples, and he says, listen, guys, this is what I need you to do. I want to challenge you that here we are in an incredible moment in history, and I could you not just pray for one hour? Could you not do this for one hour? I want to be the people, and I want to be just a simple son of the living God that says, God, I'm willing to give you an hour. I'm willing to give you 21 days of seeking after you. I'm willing to, to go to the place of holding fast to a discipline of my faith that I know that will produce results. Look at these results. I want to show you this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. This is Jesus and he's coming, he's been baptized, and he's coming by and being led by the Holy Spirit and coming into the place of the wilderness. And when he's in the wilderness, he's tempted by the enemy. Now, I want you to read, I want you to follow this with me. This is Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. That's a great thing, huh? Y'all all right? Was this too challenging this morning? Y'all are awful quiet. I can begin slapping people if I, if I need to. All right, now, now listen. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, I love this part, afterward he was hungry. You think? Now, how many of you are thankful that the Lord didn't lay upon our heart and the conviction upon our hearts not to fast for 40 days? He was 21 days. That's supposed to be funny and you're not laughing. But Jesus fasting for 40 days and he was hungry... And when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones become bread. And he, and he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What a response. Amen? Can I tell you something? Whenever you're a person of prayer and you hold fast to the discipline of praying, and I'm going to add to that fasting, Whenever you pray and you fast, you're going to be ready for whatever temptation the enemy puts to you because you realize that the substance to your life is not what you eat. It's not a fleshly appetite of what you may consume of certain things, of certain things that come to the eyes, the mouth, any senses that, that you have coming and, and feeding your life, that the substance of your life is the same substance that Jesus held, which is the Word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The word of God is my substance. And when I hold fast to the arena of prayer, I'm building a substance in my life so that I'm ready whenever the enemy comes to tempt, because he will. There will be temptations that will come. There will be certain things that will draw me away from this awesome walk with God that I'm able to have that will bring me to the place of maybe just being a little bit lukewarm. I don't have time to be lukewarm. There's a generation coming up behind me that needs to see the light of God's Word at work. There's a generation coming up behind you and I that need to see that faith does work. God is still the God of miracles. God is still not. He hasn't left the throne. He's still on it. The generation behind us needs to know the power of the Spirit of God at work in the earth today. They need to see the fact that when you lay hands on the sick and pray, they will recover. They need to see that God is still at work. And a person of prayer is a person that comes to the place where they realize that our substance is not what we do for a living. Our substance is not who we're married to. Our substance is not the things that we do that we enjoy. Our substance is the Word of God. Man shall not live by word alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Your answer is not in what you do. The answer is in the Word of God. Come on now, is anybody here? The answer is in the Word of God. 
Once again, I'm not smart enough. Please don't say amen. I don't have it all figured out. But I know by being a person of prayer, I'm spending time with the one that does have it figured out. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Verse 5. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him up on the, the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. The greatest lie of the enemy is if. The greatest lie of the enemy and of this world is if you're good enough. If you can accomplish it. Can I tell you something? God doesn't look at you as an if. He looks at you as an incredible child that says, I know you can. Not if you can, I know you can. Is that not what we do with our own children? We, we don't just tell them if, I know you can do that. I know that you can take that step. I know that you can make that run. I know that you can accomplish that. When God looks at you, he says, I know you because you are created in my image and in my likeness. I know that you can do it because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. I know that you can do it. The enemy says, if you are the son of God, then jump off this pinnacle. The highest place and, and, and let, the in, let the angels come and, and catch you. Jesus responds to him. And he says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And again, the devil took him up in verse 8 to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, all these things I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Or you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. Listen, Jesus comes to his disciples in what we read in Matthew 6, and he says, Could you not tarry for one hour? Could you not do this for one hour? And he goes on and prays. He knows that if the disciples can hold fast to a specific pattern of praying and fasting, then he knows that when they gain this and their eyes are opened up to it, that they will walk in a substance that's not driven by what they can create, but a substance that is called the Word of God that will never fail us. He knows that if they develop a, a, and become a person of prayer and fasting, that literally they will be able to, to look at the lie of the enemy or the temptation of the enemy and overcome it. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted as on all points, as you and I are tempted, yet he was without sin. He did that as the Son of Man. He did that as the Son of Man. You and I are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And if Jesus can hold fast to a pattern of prayer and fasting to overcome any level of temptation, my friend, you and I can do the same thing. I'm not talking about us being perfect. What I'm talking about is us recognizing, wait a minute, that's not who I am. Wait a minute, that is a temptation to try to move me away from this deeper walk with God. And listen, it would be a mistake for me to not challenge you to be deeper in your walk of prayer. It would be a mistake for me not to challenge you in your home and, and in your marriage, your ability to be sons and daughters of the Most High God. Listen, the, the point of being a person of prayer and, and being able to tarry for one hour, the, the ability to, to, to just hold fast to this pattern that says, I must be a person of prayer, prepares me for what is on the way. I want to be prepared. I don't like going into things blind. Anybody else like going into things blind? I don't, I don't like going in, into things and just totally going, man, where did that come from? That's still going to happen, but I would rather be prepared. Jesus told his disciples, could you not tarry for one hour? Look what's coming. They, 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 couldn't, they couldn't grasp their mind. He had had dinner with them. He had shared with them every specific detail that was going to take place, and they still didn't get it. Let's don't be those people. Every specific detail of what will unfold in the earth is literally described in the substance of the Word of God. Let's not be taken by surprise in the things that we see in this world. But let's be ready because we're people of prayer. 
Come on now, is anybody here? And the last thing that Jesus did in the midst of this, of this pattern of fasting is that he told the enemy that literally there is no other one in whom I'm going to worship but God. You see, when you're a person of prayer, there's something that unfolds in you that you realize that the center of your worship is not you, it's God. The center of what you worship in this life is not what you accomplish, but what God is accomplishing in you and through you. Isn't that beautiful? See, here's the thing about God. He's always taking the focus off of you (laughs) and putting it on Him. And a person of prayer and a person that develops this this, this pattern of fasting in our our lives. Listen, you know, listen, I do this regularly. But the, the, the thing is this, when we give up these certain things, we are developing a pattern of just saying, God, you're first and my flesh is second. That's all it is. God, you're first and the desires of my flesh are second. God, I'm putting you first. Well, you need to do that because you're, you're a pastor. <laughs> Again, I'm a son of God. That's all I am. I'm a child of the Most High God, and I want to spend time with Him. I want to be a person of prayer and not just a person that prays. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm glad I'm here today because I needed this. Oh, come on, that didn't have much power behind it. All right, I want you to catch this. I want you to catch this, and I'm going to bring these points up for you. So if you are taking any level of notes, just just remember these three things today. That if we could catch this foundation, if we could hold fast to it, we will understand that prayer and fasting brings us to the place of where the substance for what we would see, that would see us through. The substance of what would see them through. This is what he told his disciples. Could you not tarry for one hour? Because you need the substance that's going to see you through. When you pray and you fast, you are developing a substance of the Word of God in you and the presence of God at work in you. That's all you need to get you through. I don't know what you may be going through in 2019, but let's be prepared. I don't know what's I don't know what challenge is going to arise in your family, but let's be prepared. I don't I don't know what's going to unfold in the midst of your marriage, but I want you to know it's a challenge. Are you ready for the challenge? Come on now, is anybody here? I don't know, I don't know what your teenage kids going to do in 2019 that's going to be stupid, but they will. They're teenagers. And they go stupid. Can I hear an amen? amen. We love teenagers, but they don't know how to handle everything that's going on on the inside of them. And so stupid raises up. You got to deal with stupid. Only God can fix stupid. Come on now, is anybody here? But things come up in our life. Are we prepared? A person of prayer says, I'm not going to be shaken by what I'm looking at. I'm going and holding fast to a pattern of prayer. If Jesus had to go through a pattern and a discipline of prayer and fasting, how much more do I need to? How much more do I need to? Pastor Yonggi Cho uh, in, in, in South Korea has one of the largest churches in the world. Close to a million people. Incredible. And Yonggi Cho makes this statement, powerful book. It's a book called The Fourth Dimension, a powerful book. And Yonggi Cho says that I have to pray three hours a day because I have too much to do today to mess what God has for me. Isn't that powerful? i got to spend three hours in prayer today because there's so much happening that I don't want to miss what God has for me today. Can I tell you something? One word from God in prayer can change your life. One word from God in your prayer and one conviction of of the Holy Spirit in the midst of prayer can totally stop you from making one of the gravest mistakes that you could ever make. One moment with God can literally change any level of sorrow that you may be carrying and give you the joy that you need. The Bible says that in His presence there is a fullness of joy. I can't find that anywhere else. But when I become a person of prayer, and not just a person that prays, but a person of prayer that holds fast to a pattern of prayer and fasting, I'm spending time with the one that can give me the joy that I need by his Holy Spirit. Amen? If you're empty, you're empty 
All right, I'm going to say this one tough thing, all right? This, this is going to be hard, but I love you enough to tell you the truth. If you're empty, it's because it's a reflection of your prayer life. I'm sorry. I love you. But if you're empty on the inside, if you're lacking fulfillment, it is a reflection of your prayer life. Because if you, if you are a person of prayer and you hold fast to this pattern, you hold fast to this spiritual discipline, you're overflowing. I'm not happy just because I put this on. I'm happy because it comes up from the inside out. Come on, is anybody here? I put a smile on my face because of what's going on on the inside of me. I can't stand, I, I, okay, let me say this. I don't like fake people. I love them, but I don't like them. Okay, that's a joke, right? I, I just believe in being real. I believe in being the, the real deal every day of our life. And when you're a person of prayer, it just overflows out of your life. So there's a substance for what would see them through. Could you not tarry for one hour? There is a substance that's waiting on you. It is written, man should not live by bread, bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Secondly, when we become a person of prayer, we hold fast to that. We have the ability to overcome the enemies and the world's temptation. I've already talked about it. I just want to drive it home in you today. There's a temptation that's waiting on you. The Bible says that the enemy goes around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. It's his goal to try to devour your faith, devour your joy, and destroy the destiny that God has prepared for you. If he can thwart that, he'll do everything he can to do it. But a person of prayer recognizes that temptation. It is written. It is written. And then thirdly, their worship would stay centered on the Lord God Almighty. When you're a person of prayer, your worship stays centered. It moves from you and it stays on God. We believe that God's building a foundation in each and every one of us in this place over the next few weeks. And it's a foundation that builds these three things within us. I want you to go to Daniel 10 with me very quickly. But in Daniel 10, I want to just bring you to the foundation of why we believe for 21 days this is a significant thing. In Daniel chapter 10, beginning in verse 2, it says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Fasting is a time where you are setting aside the things of, of, of your flesh. And can I say this? It's, it's just a great health break for you. It's a great health break to give up those 44 ounces. Come on now, is anybody here? It's a great health break to, to, to give up that ice cream every night. I know I just stepped on somebody's toes and I apologize. But it's a great break health-wise for you for 21 days just to seek God and give up those things that are just simply appetites of the flesh. Daniel was mourning. He was fasting for three full weeks. Watch this. I ate no pleasant food. Oh, wow, Pastor, that sounds really great. I'm really excited about that. No meat or wine. Oh, wow, it just gets better and better came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself or bathe for three whole weeks. Please bathe. Please. Please bathe. For the love of God, bathe. We want you clean. In fact, Jesus tells us that whenever he's talking to the Pharisees and about them being hypocritical about fasting, he says, you come out and you, you, you just wash your face to make sure that you're coming forth with a freshness. He was challenging him, don't fast for the show, but fast for the sincerity of what it does. It creates a substance in you. It creates a pattern in you. And it causes you to become a person of prayer instead of a person who prays. Come on now, is anybody here? All right, so please wash. Verse 4. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I, was, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of Euphaz, and his body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words were like the voice of a multitude. Can I tell you something? When you become a person who holds fast to prayer, you will hear God in an incredible way. It begins to bring a sensitivity to the hearing of your ear. 
It begins to unlock what you may have heard just through the flesh to all of a sudden it is spirit of God speaking to the spirit of man. And it's a beautiful thing. And what I want you to see is in verse 12 that, that he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Daniel, because you become a person of prayer, because you have fasted these 21 days, I have come because of your prayer. Isn't that incredible? As soon as he began to pray, God began to move. Can I tell you something? There are some battles that you and I will face, that there is a battle that's going on behind the scenes that we cannot see with our eyes, nor can we hear with our ears, but God is at work on your behalf, and he will begin it the day that you set your heart to pray. Come on, that deserves a shout in this place today. Because I'm telling you, there's some battles that you and I, that we'll get stressed out over. We'll just begin to get overwhelmed by them. Let's don't begin there. Let's begin by holding fast to a pattern of fasting and prayer that sets the stage for God to do the battle on your behalf. Because that's who He is. God fights your battles. And a person of prayer, one that holds fast, is one that just begins to develop this moving. In verse 13, I love this. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. And he's talking about strongholds. He's talking about things that take place that you and I can't see. There's a battle in the earth for your soul. There's a battle in, the, in, in, this, in this life that you and I live in for the happiness and the fulfillment that God has, des- has designed for you to walk in. And that battle is not fought by you just standing up. That battle is fought when you're able to go to your knees and begin to be a person of prayer. Come on, if you're ready to be a person of prayer, let's give God a shout of praise in this place today. God, we thank you. We thank you that we're ready to be people of prayer. When we fast, we deal with the appetite of our flesh. We dethrone the appetite of our flesh. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Beginning next Sunday night, I'm just asking you and your family, sit down and say, these are the things that we are fasting. For 21 days, we're going to give up certain things. We ask our, our kids to do this and we hold them accountable to it. And then, and then we come together and we pray for 21 days with ball games and all that other kind of stuff going on. Sometimes we don't make it every night. But we will do everything that we can to come together as a family and pray. And just ask God to bless the upcoming year. Let's begin to set things in order. Matthew 6, and I'm going to close with this, says this. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. If you read in Matthew 6, he says, don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about the food that you're going to eat. Don't worry about all those things. There's enough worry in the day to take care of itself. But seek first the kingdom of heaven. Seek first God at the beginning of this year. Hold fast to a pattern. A pattern that will hold you through. A pattern that will bring your family to a place where they're people of prayer. And not just somebody that prays. Come on now, listen. I believe God gets excited over the moments that you come together and you pray over your food. And that's awesome. But I believe there's a destiny laying within the depths of your family that's yet to be achieved. And the prayer unto God is going to begin to unfold that in this upcoming year. I believe there's fulfillment that's still at work within the depths of your heart of things that you want to see take place in your life. I believe there's a God-given dream that God has given you to help with certain things that the kingdom of heaven is doing and being about. I was with a a man, I'm going to close with this story, uh, last week, and he was sharing with me the dream that God had in his heart of what he wanted to do. And what he wanted to do is that he wanted to build a retreat for married couples to get away, to where they could come and and that they could just receive uh, just, just, just ministry. They may not have anything going on, but just to strengthen their marriage. And he says, if I don't do anything, else in this life, I want to build that retreat. That's a God-given dream. 
So I want to stretch you over the next few weeks. I want to stretch you over the next five weeks to begin to, to begin to look at the dream that God has put in you. But as we begin to prepare for 2019, let's deal with the appetite of our flesh. Let's begin to dethrone the appetites of the things that we think we have to have on a daily basis. And we say, God, we're going to give this to you. We're going to give this time to you. I'm going to wake up early and I'm going to pray. Or before I go to bed at night, I want to spend time building an altar of prayer in the midst of my home so that we're prepared for what is going to unfold in this year. Come on, do you receive that today? If you do, then give God the highest praise. He deserves it. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet if you would, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around today. I am so thankful that you're here today. And and just in the next few short moments, I want to speak directly to your heart. I believe that the Spirit of God is already moving uh, within this place today. I believe this word challenges me, so I I know it's challenging. But again, that's always our heart here. We don't come just to patty cake with Jesus. We come to say, Jesus, we want, we want to grow. Jesus, we, 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 want to, we want to grow with a fervent faith for you. The world is falling apart, and the only thing that stands at the end of the day is your word. Your word is substance to us. Your word is what holds us in the midst of temptation. And your word is what creates within us the center of our worship, who is you. If you're here today, and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, I'm going to ask you here in just a moment to say, I need to confess Jesus as Lord. He's not the Lord of my life right now. I am. And I need to confess Jesus as Lord. Secondly, if you're here today, if you're here today, and you say, Pastor Cody, listen, I'm running from God. I'm on the run. My faith is, is... it's at, it's, at, it's at the bottom basement level. And I hear the challenge of your, of your word today. And I know that I need to push the button to get to the first level. And that first level is coming into a personal relationship once again. Maybe you left it. And you need to come back. You need to push that button. You say, I, I've got to come back. I mentioned earlier in the service about just being lukewarm. Maybe you're in this place of just being lukewarm in your faith. And you just need to make a rededication of your heart to the Lord. You're going to do this right there where you stand. But I just believe just within my heart as I was preparing for the service today, that there was somebody that they felt like they was in that lukewarm space. Can, can I tell you something? God's on the elevator with you. He's just waiting for you to push the button. He's, he hasn't left you. He hasn't left you. He's as close as your very breath. He knows the number of hair on your head. You are the apple of his eye. He loves you. His grace is amazing. If you're one of those two people, would you just real quickly lift your hand? I'm going to pray with you all across this place. Thank you, my brother. I see that hand. Thank you for responding today. That's awesome. Thank you, sweetheart. I see that hand. Thank you. It's incredible. It's the most important thing that we do. We make room for God. Let's pray this prayer together as a church with those that raise their hand. Let's put something to it. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, forgive me for every wrong thing said, every wrong thing done. I confess that I'm a sinner. But today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus was risen from the dead. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Come on, let's give God praise for those that prayed that prayer today. Thank you for joining with them. That's powerful. I'm Pastor Cody Anderson, and I want to thank you for joining us today. We want to connect with you in any way possible. And so if the message ministered to you in any way, shape, or form, We want you to join with us as each week, we're right here, same place. So come and be with us every week and then connect with us even deeper. Join with us. Give. Go to faithcenterpeople.com. Find the giving donation button that's on that website and be a part of what we're doing every week. You can help us because every week we desire to be a part of what you 
are walking through in your personal journey. So thank you so much for being with us. Go to faithcenterpeople.com and be a part of all that is taking place at Faith Center Fellowship. Thank you.